some fans may think that just because their team won, it's suddenly the only thing that matters, right? It At the end of the day, they got the W, and they're going to the quarterfinals or semifinals or, you know, they, they just won the grand final, and that's all that matters is that they beat the enemy opponent, and that asserts their dominance, and that shows that they're a better team than the opponent themselves. But I don't think this is necessarily all true because think about it this way. This is kind of akin to winning a solo queue game yet getting carried right there are those circumstances where sometimes you're 0 and 6 in lane and yet your ally laners are dominating their lanes and so it kind of counterbalances what you're doing and what you're doing incorrectly and so they carry you throughout the rest of the game and so there are those people that then either reflect on that game and say oh I did this bad I did this bad I shouldn't have done this trade and then there are those people that think oh I won the game that that must mean there's nothing wrong with what I did right I I contributed to the team I contributed to the win fully and everything that I did was correct and I'm better than my opponent because I won but that's not the case at all. That's a terrible way to think because then you don't improve by your victories ever because there are faults within your victories too. So you have to take those into account in order to maximize your efficiency in order to be better at the game itself. You can't just analyze your defeats and say, oh, I did this wrong. This is why we lost. No, you can't just restrict it to just defeats. You have to also look at your victories and say, oh, I did this wrong as well too. Here's what I can improve on. And therefore, you improve your games ideally, you know, around a 50% win rate, right? So 50% of the games, you are then able to analyze and say, this is what I can improve on as well too, as well as your defeats. So you're improving on 100% of your games instead of 50% of your games. Now another problem is winning in the same fashion. Now there can be a team that is really great say at playing through mid lane, yet all they do is play through mid lane. So suddenly they're a very one dimensional team. And I don't particularly have a problem with being somewhat one dimensional in the sense that Yes, you do get most of your victories through this way, and uh, you're playing towards your strength instead of trying to shore up your weaknesses so much that you can never play to your strengths again. I don't necessarily believe in that, but I don't believe in teams being one-dimensional because then when they meet a stronger opponent that has figured out their kind of strategy in order to win the game every single time, well, then suddenly that becomes moot, right? They've, they've figured it out, they've read your book, and they know exactly how to counteract that. And then it becomes the problem, too, when there is a team that is exactly doing what you don't want them to do because they have mastered the strategy that counteracts your strategy and every single time they will beat you because you're so one-dimensional and they've perfected this other style that completely counteracts your style and so then it becomes a situation to where you can almost never win against that team and so therefore no one's ever going to say that you're this ultimate great team because constantly you're losing against this enemy team that's either one dimensional as well or they are multi-dimensional and they just know exactly which style to pick against you and so that becomes a problem too when suddenly you're winning constantly in the same fashion and it's not necessarily a good win and then of course there's barely winning against a bad opponent or an underrated opponent. Now, this I think is uh, very common. I think a lot of people realize the fault within this in that you were supposed to win this game in the first place. As a matter of fact, you were actually supposed to stomp the enemy team, but you didn't. 
And so it becomes this problem of where, oh, maybe you lost the level one or you you got invaded on and you did something stupid in the beginning. So it set you way back. And so now you have to crawl back through this game in order to even win it. And it's a constant struggle and you don't look good doing it. And your star player maybe isn't performing or, you know, one of your players is just choking. And so this win also doesn't feel good as well too because you should have gotten the win regardless anyways so this is a very common uh, symptom of a team that wins yet it's not a good win and most people realize this portion of my argument right it's it's a very common uh, thought process and then of course probably the worst way to win is because of a bug or a glitch or even better yet because of cheating right so there have been many instances where teams have won uh, of a bug or a glitch and that basically skews the game to where you can't really take a whole lot of valuable data in determining of well we won because of this strategy or this strategy let's keep focusing on this or you know let's change up our game plan on this to where this works but instead you're relying upon this bug or this glitch to win you the game and so that portion doesn't really take any skill other than the knowledge of that bug or that glitch right and there have been instances to skew games in the favor of a specific team like i believe it was a tsm game where they warded in the baron pit and there's a pixel within the baron pit to where you can put a green ward or a vision ward or whatever they're called now and this pixel makes it to where that the enemy can't sweep the ward they don't even know about the ward and also a pink ward within the baron pit doesn't even see the ward as well too so you constantly have baron pit warded so you can know exactly how much the hp is and you can run in there and smite it or do high damage abilities so that you can get the baron or you could just set up a play to ambush them while they're doing the baron right and so this largely affects the game because baron is a a very big objective within the game so this skews the game's results and it basically skews everything that surrounds that specific play and so you you can't really analyze it to its fullest degree and then there's of course the cheating aspect right is it cheating someone's using aimbot maybe in counter-strike or something and so all they want to do is win the match itself and that's it but really there's no particular satisfaction in that that doesn't actually prove that you're better than the enemy player that matter of fact that probably proves that you're worse than the enemy player because you have to rely on something that is not actually your own skill so therefore you're having this crutch and you're really not deserving the win at all and this is probably the worst way to win a game uh, hands down and then of course there's the glitch aspect where you maybe abuse a glitch or a glitch just simply happens to where it largely affects the game or the outcome of the game uh, such as Bjergsen's Cinder ult uh, I've seen it before I believe it was in the spring uh, 2017 finals I want to say against cloud nine to where it does double damage uh, against the enemy opponent so it, the ult goes off twice and so this obviously can have very large effects on a team fight and so hopefully he doesn't know about this and is not abusing it uh, per se but it's still something that can affect the outcome of the game and if that is a super large win condition for the game then obviously that's not a good way to win the game and then of course there is a decision that ends up having a positive outcome but is not necessarily a good decision. And I think this is very glossed over because a lot of people can't determine whether a win is good or not and whether a decision is good or not because they just look at the outcome, right? So if someone 
thinks that a win is automatically good no matter what, no matter what happens within the game, then they're also going to think along the lines of, well, every decision that turns into a positive outcome is also a good decision. But that's a terrible way to think <laughs> because of probability itself. And that, well, if you're doing Baron, let's say, and Midwave is, is pushed against you and you don't have vision, you haven't sweeped anything, the whole enemy team is alive and you don't have any wards around the Baron at all so you don't know if they're coming or not and they're off the map so it's probably likely that they're coming for you and the enemy jungler is two levels ahead so he has a higher smite than you but you still get the Baron somehow, right? That doesn't make that play correct that and that's something that's a lot of the times misunderstood just because the outcome is correct doesn't mean that the process was correct at all the 20 percent chance that you have of getting this baron versus the 80 percent chance that you have of not getting the baron and this one instance you suddenly get it doesn't make it a good decision because 80 percent of the time you won't be able to get it so when looking at a VOD review or something like that you should think to yourself that no this was a bad decision because what happens if this 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 happens there there's a multitude of things that can go wrong they didn't but there are a multitude of things that could have went wrong and so therefore in the future you should probably not make that play because 80 times out of a hundred it's going to go wrong and so this you can kind of compare it to like Russian roulette let's raise the stakes right so say you're playing Russian roulette and there's one bullet in the chamber uh, in like a five chamber gun I don't know I don't know if revolvers have five or six chambers or even if they make a five chamber I don't know but make the math easier is that just because you're playing this and you don't shoot yourself and you don't kill yourself doesn't make that a good decision. There's a 20% chance that you're going to die. I'm not going to take those odds. I think those are terrible odds. Why would I ever do that when the risk is so high and the reward is so low of, you know, 500 bucks or something on the table or a thousand or it doesn't even matter really the amount of money. But it's a terrible idea and the probability and the risk versus reward is not good enough in order to do that and so just like the Baron instance the risk is not worth the reward because the chances are you're going to lose the game from that specific play so you probably shouldn't do that play you should probably prep the Baron or you should probably get vision around and make sure maybe the enemy junglers dead or that you have a smite that's equal to his or that you have some good objective control with one of your champions in order to pull off a play like that to increase the probability and then there's the smaller aspects of well okay some laners for instance in high level play they'll do a very stupid move on purpose like they'll dodge a skill shot by running straight now this is a difference in risk versus reward and that yes the probability is high that you could still get hit from this ability but the risk is so low that it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because yes it'll take a chunk down from your hp bar but other than that it's not going to affect the laning phase that much and especially if you don't do it quite often enough too because otherwise if you keep making these these bad decisions and if you keep dodging straight well then suddenly it's going to add up and obviously the probability is going to add up that they're just going to destroy you and keep on hitting you because they figured out your plan right and most likely the probability goes even lower and lower the more and more that you do it because they know your strategy and so there comes from this too of mind games of, of purposely doing something stupid and so yes you can do something stupid on occasion to throw off the enemy's game plan or to throw them off uh, thinking well I know what he's going to do so therefore 
going to do this but then of course it goes in that endless endless spiral or i know he's going to do this but he knows i'm going to do that but i know he's you know and so on and so forth but the thing is is that the probability once again of risk versus reward is that you're still doing a bad decision so you can't keep doing bad decisions over and over again or else it eventually catches up to you and it aggregates and so in the end while yes winning is what your ultimate goal is how you do it should determine your satisfaction in the entire victory in itself and you should be able to determine between the risk versus reward and the probability and the positive outcome is not necessarily attached to a good decision or a bad decision and that basically you should respect that there are satisfactory wins and there are unsatisfactory wins and having a win because you played awful is not a good thing and not every win is equal and that determining factor.